What's up? Uh, welcome to the Counting Wisdom podcast. You know, um, <clears throat> there's a lot going on in the world, you know, a lot of destructive things going on in the world. But there's also a lot of good things going on as far as God's work in our lives. God is moving in our lives. Um, people are coming to Christ. You know, um, they may have never really uh, gotten serious about God or maybe they never knew really anything about God and they decided to follow Jesus. And so um, one day the door will shut. Um, I think that, you know, we do our best. I think all of us should be in some form or another uh, letting our light shine and, you know, trying to give people, uh, an introduction to the gospel or, uh, you know, trying to share the gospel in some form or another, whether that be through words or maybe a book or a conversation. Um, there's a few different ways you can share the gospel, but you can also, live out the gospel in that you live differently from the world. And so uh, we're not told when the door is going to shut. You know, that's why we prepare for our death in a way. Um, As we live our life, we um, don't just automatically assume, you know, oh, I'm going to make it in the rapture as far as, you know, um, when the rapture is, of course, we should do our best to, you know, get ready to make it in the rapture. But what I meant was, you know, I'm not going, you know, you and I should live in a way of kind of a sober mindset. Uh, Sober is another word for just kind of like taking things seriously, that the rapture could happen, you know, 50 years from now, 60 years a hundred years, two hundred years, three hundred years, we don't know, you know, um, and um, but we do know the signs of the times, and you know, one thing I said to myself is, I don't know how long the world can last in the way that it's living now. Yeah, you know, I will say that, you know, I think God destroyed the world in a much worse condition in the days of Noah in the days of Lot you know I I feel like it was more unrestrained you know um, and when I really think about you know God destroying the world um, to me it has to be you know pretty bad and so um, do I think we're there yet you know, I think we're kind of on the pathway walking, you know, towards that direction and we're getting close to the door. Um, I don't know how else to put it is. Yes, I think we are. We're close, you know, as far as, you know, riots are concerned, you know, there seems to be a new riot, uh, you know, every uh, other week or so, you know, there's some protest. Uh, you know, masses of people are doing wrong, you know, and I don't know how long um, we can go on like this. But, you know, I do think that it's possible that maybe there's, you know, it could be a few more years until, you know, things really take place. From what I noticed is that it seems like, you know, sometimes it takes a while for things to really materialize and as far as, you know, the rapture or, you know, Jesus returning and entering into the period of the tribulation. You know, to me, it seems like it, you know, moves in a way that shows God's patience You know, it shows that God is waiting for people to be saved. You know, I know I'm one of those people, even though I'm only 30 years old and, you know, um, I 
was born not that long ago, but still, I'm one that did need God's patience as far as, you know, I was, you know, a Christian. I just feel like I grew as a Christian, you know, uh, more and more as I got older. Um, And sometimes I consider myself not fully being a Christian until I got baptized in 2017. But I had been a Christian before that time, you know, and in those years. But I would say, you know, I saw more change in myself, you know, um, around 2017-ish, 2016, uh, 2015-ish. But also had big sins after that, you know, that I had to work on. And so there could be someone out there in the same way, you know, that needs God's patience to have time to change, you know? So I don't think we should really rush in times because I think we should think about it from the perspective of that person that's out there in the world that, you know, needs time to come to Christ. But, you know, at the same time, the Bible says, search for God while he may be found. And so uh, the door does get shut as far as, you know, when the rapture happens, no one's going to get raptured, you know, right after the rapture, you know. And so, um, you know, it's not like you can, after the rapture, you can say, you know, oh, God, you know, take me up to heaven and he's just going to rapture you again or rapture someone again. And so um, I think if we think of end times happening as, you know, maybe we can notice who's getting saved at church. You know, um, I noticed that, you know, um, maybe it's not a whole bunch of people every weekend getting saved, but I do notice at church that, you know, there are still, you know, uh, five, six, ten people each service getting saved, you know, and so, um, I know God probably doesn't want me to try to calculate it, you know, but it's for him to know, but at the same time, You know, we are supposed to know the season of Christ's return. Um, And so as I look at the world, there has to be some point when we look at things in the world and we kind of see like, okay, they're not going to recover from that. You know, I know sometimes in society, um, you know, there's probably ups and downs as far as maybe crime is concerned as far as sin is concerned, you know, and so I'm not an expert because, again, I'm only 30, you know, but at the same time, we can kind of look at society and think like, okay, are they going to recover from that? You know, as far as Haiti is concerned, um, you know, I don't know if that's going to get better. Uh, You know, Haiti is gone. Um, as far as what's happening in Israel, you know, I know Israel has conflicts. It seems like every single week, every single week these days, you know, Israel is, um, in conflict, uh, with someone that neighbors their border, you know, um, and so we have to ask ourselves, you know, is is that situation going to get better? And the Bible gives indication that, you know, when it kind of does seemingly get better is only when it's at its worst state, which is the Antichrist, you know, makes a treaty with Israel. And there um, some speculate that that covenant that is made with them or, you know, some sort of treaty or something helps them build the temple some speculate it's a it's a it's a covenant for them to build the temple or um you know other things but anyway um 
I don't think, you know, it's fully to the point where I can say, you know, maybe a society isn't going to recover. You know, I know riots that happen, you know, kind of show that people are kind of fed up with life and, you know, they can't really, you know, take much more of, you know, just the everyday circumstances of life, you know, where France and France, um, they are um, protesting over, you know, something in the, that's happening in their country. And so it's seemingly turning violent. And so I think, you know, that last word makes things a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of apparent is violence. You know, um, the word violence, I think, is a word that describes, you know, um, what God hates. And as we see more violence, you know, it will kind of show that in the end times are near. So anyway, um, back to just, um, I had to walk away real quick, but I paused it. And so um, back to just the door being shut. Um, You know, there's going to come a time where that happens. And so, um, you know, I think we should live in light of eternity. You know, I said this in another podcast, but I recommend the book um, In Light of Eternity by Randy Alcorn. I also recommend a few of his books. Um, Heaven is Good, uh, 50 Days of Heaven, and then also um, Eternity, Money, Possessions, and Eternity. And... You know, he really stresses that, you know, um, we should live with this mindset that, you know, um, eternity is ahead of us. And he had an an analogy that I thought was good was um, which was he was saying how, um, you know, you can kind of travel um, to a city and, you know, when you're traveling, you are really just preparing for your final destination. And let's say you, you start off in California, but you have a layover on your flight. You have a layover maybe in like Colorado or something or Texas and you're headed to Florida And so, um, you know, because you stop at the airport that's before your final airport, you know, you don't um, do certain things because you know that you're just going to catch a next flight and get to the final destination. Um And basically, I can give a summary of another analogy, which was just, you know, saying how, you know, we have to send our treasure ahead of us. And he was saying how, you know, are you headed towards your treasure or are you headed away from your treasure? And he explained that as saying that, you know, if you have your treasure here on earth which jesus by the way said don't store up treasure for yourself here on earth and so he's saying you know if you have your treasure here on earth and you know maybe you have this nice house you maybe have you know your dream car and you know you have all this money in the bank and you know you kind of built this life for yourself here on earth Well, when you die, you're headed away from that treasure because it was here on earth while you live. And so, you know, he was making the point that, you know, 
if you are building your treasure here on earth because you're headed towards death that you are um headed away from your treasure but if you store up treasure for yourself in heaven which Jesus said which was things doing things like giving to the poor um you know he said that when you die you're headed towards your treasure and so i thought that was a good analogy in that you know we can't only live for this life and i think that you know he was making a great point that you know sometimes here on earth we can kind of think like oh you know i got to uh, work work extra hours and you know i got to sacrifice this and sacrifice that in order to get this life that i want here on earth and you know it's kind of like having this motto that you only live once and you know you have to do everything in this life and try to get all your dreams accomplished because you only live once and that mindset and that motto you only live once is not accurate and it's not a good way to live and so as a christian you know he, he's making the point that you know we have to have this mindset that you know where are we where's our final destination you know earth is just kind of the temporary airport that we're in and we're really it's just a layover but we're really just headed to our final destination and so you know there's certain things that you just don't do or there's certain ways that you live and you know i'm still learning how to do everything like that you know um i know it's you know tempting to uh you know maybe make certain decisions in order to kind of try to build this dream life you know and i think that you know if you're living in poverty or something you know i don't i wouldn't say you know oh it's wrong for you to try to work to get out of poverty i would only say you know it's wrong for us to work you know and sacrifice in order to try to get rich i think if you're looking to you know uh just cover your bills and you know uh you know just maybe make a little bit of a better life for yourself you know i wouldn't say that's against scripture but scripture does have something to say with a love for money and never being satisfied and always wanting more and more you know god has some negative things to say about that you know and so um it's also called greediness and and so um living for eternity and as we I tie this back into you know living as if the door is going to be shut you know um as we look at the things happening in the world you know um we have things that we need to be doing because we see what we see in the world you know um hebrews talks about not stopping going to church you know um because we see the day approaching and that's that's another good verse you know that we can know that the day is approaching is that you know it says that we should be able to know the day is approaching because it gave us the admonition the warning to um not stop going to church and so we should be able to see the day is approaching and so um i you know I think that we can safely say that we see the day is approaching you know just by 
it matching up with some of the things Jesus predicted, you know, um, and we have to know that, okay, maybe I should, you know, share with my loved ones, uh, my relationship with Jesus, you know, um, maybe I should try to share with friends, you know, that they should put their faith in Jesus and, you know, share your testimony a little bit. Um, You know, maybe you should tell strangers that you are living for Jesus. You know, um, I think we have to really help our minds think in the right way because our minds can start to think, uh, you know, maybe it isn't end times. You know, maybe, you know, we can't really know, so why why worry about it? And I don't mean to say that we won't see the day approaching, you know, because we will. I just think, you know, we can't. I don't mean to sound like, you know, when I say we don't know the day or the hour, it means that, oh, it's not soon, you know, I think we should all be as Christians saying, you know, it must be soon, you know, uh, it, it must be soon, maybe uh, not by tomorrow, but, you know, it, it must be pretty soon around the corner, you know, um, and I think asking the question is, asking the question, you know, will the world recover from this? Or, you know, do you see repentance in the sight for people? You know, because some people do things and, you know, they may change, they may turn around later. But I think, you know, I'm not an expert, you know, God is, but, you know, it seems to me that when people do certain things, you know, it's an indication that, you know, they're either not going to change or they're not going to change anytime soon. And so, you know, I don't know if people who are banking on God, you know, waiting, you know, are they really expecting themselves to change, you know, in the next few years? Or I don't know if God is going to wait for, you know, the person that takes you know, super long to change, you know, I mean, maybe he will, but I guess I think the point is that there comes a time where, you know, people just won't change, you know, they get set in their ways. I mean, there was a convention for Satan just a few uh, days ago, you know, people gathered together and uh, they were worshiping Satan and uh, it was at a convention. I don't know where. Um, I'm guessing somewhere around Texas or something. I don't know. I know they said where it was, but it was supposed to be the biggest convention in history. And so, um, you know, I know that isn't a good sign at all, you know, especially to have the reputation of being one of the biggest ones in history. And so, um, you know, to me, when a person does something like that, you know, they may not be on that road to repentance anytime soon. You know, um, of course, depending on what someone does, you know, we we kind of have hope for that person, you know, we're like, oh, you know, maybe they're just kind of in a bad time right now, or, you know, maybe they're, you know, going through something, and so that's why they did that, or that's why they, you know, said that, or, you know, something like that, but anyway, um, I think I hope. Babe, I already changed her diaper.